How do you separate the bottom stage off of a two-stage rocket? That seems to be a common question these days, and that's what I'm going to cover in this video. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry building techniques and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Today I'm going to discuss how to separate a two-stage rocket from each other. Now there are four ways and I'm going to cover all four. Now the question comes up mostly from people outside the United States that aren't familiar with model rockets and how they work. For some reason they think that inside the rocket is some kind of apparatus, maybe some springs or some explosive bolts that push the rocket apart. Now that could be the first method to separate the rocket. Some type of explosive bolts or an explosive squid or some kind of spring system. But I have never ever seen it used in model rocketry. It's used in the real space program. Um, when I worked on the Delta II program, the second stage was separated from the booster stage by a set of springs. Uh, but that's way too complicated for model rocketry. But if you want to learn about how to make explosive pyrotechnic bolts, we do have a newsletter that covers that topic. It's in our newsletter section, the Peak of Flight newsletter, and it's newsletter number 266. So you can read about it there, but I guarantee you, you won't need it for model rocketry. So the most common way that stages are separated in model rockets, and this is typically on all small stage rockets, is that there is an increase in pressure inside the rocket that pressurizes it and it just pops it apart. Now there's two ways to do this. Um, the first way, which is typical of model rockets, is you use a booster stage motor and you can tell it uh, that this motor is a booster stage because there's no cap on top. So basically what you're seeing here is raw propellant. And what happens is, and we have a video of this on our website, um, as the motor burns, the propellant burns from one end towards the other, and that little slug of propellant is getting thinner and thinner and thinner. Well, at some point, it's wafer thin, and it just can't hold the pressure inside the rocket. And so that little wafer thin disc of propellant just bursts. And all that pressure that's inside the rocket, it just pressurizes the area between the two stages and it just pops them apart. Now that's, that's the first method. And, and, and in black powder motor, what you also get is burning chunks of propellant that also fly forward. And those little burning chunks of propellant go into the nozzle of the upper stage and ignite it and it takes off. There it goes. And I just broke a fin off of it. <laughs> trying to grab it. Um, that happens to me too. Um, you can see all my rockets have dings in them because I fly them. Um, they're just not pretty for displays. I actually go out and fly them. So that's the first method um, is using a special booster motor. Now when you get to bigger rockets um, or if the rocket stages are separated by a greater distance. Now this one the motor would be down here and so there's a gap in here between the booster motor and the upper stage motor. And in this case, I want that flaming chunks of propellant to go up into the nozzle, but there's all kinds of cold air in there first. And you're pressurizing that cold air and it's pushing that cold air up into the nozzle of the upper stage. And that could prevent the hot exhaust gases from going inside and it prevent the booster from or the upper stage from igniting. So on this rocket, I have holes there to allow that excess gas to come out. So I'm venting all that pressure that I would need to separate. So where does the extra pressure come from? Well, what happens is once that upper stage ignites, now I got another source of pressure, another source of hot gas. And that gas is so hot and energized that it really pressurizes and it's going to blow that bottom stage off. And this happens 
almost instantaneously once that upper stage ignites. And so that's the second method, is using the exhaust gases from the upper stage to push them apart. And I'm going to come back to this because there, this is, uh, there's more I want to talk about that. Now the third method of separation, we call it drag separation. We need a force, and take this display stand out, we need a force to separate the stages. This is Newton's law, this is first law of motion, you know, an object at rest will stay at rest and an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by a force. We need a force to separate them. So drag could be that force. And so when the rocket's moving through the air, there's drag over these fins and there's drag over these fins. And if these fins produce more drag than these fins, we have a net difference in force. And that force could be enough to separate the rockets. And this is called drag separation. And this is very common in, in big rockets like this uh, because if you look in here, I've got a solid bulkhead that would prevent any gases from coming out and igniting the upper stage. So how do we ignite the upper stage? Well, we have to have electronics somewhere in the rocket to ignite this upper stage. Now, normally, um, there's, there's two, way, two places you could put the electronics. In this kit, and this is the Terrier Sandhawk kit, and we sell this on the Epigee website. And if you, and if you um, go to the Epigee website and you type in, in the search bar at the top uh, left, um, type in Terrier Sandhawk and you'll get to this page. And in this rocket, we store the electronics in the upper stage. In the electronics, there's a wire that comes down inside this tube you can see there's a gap right in here so the wires come through inside and then go into the nozzle and that igniter will light the upper stage now if you're using drag separation that's what you have to do you have to put the electronics in the upper stage now if you want to put them in the booster stage uh, there's a lot of room in this rocket in fact i could mount electronics into this coupler you know, put another bulkhead in here just to prevent any exhaust gases from frying my electronics. Um, this is going back to method number two, like in this one, where the exhaust gases of the upper stage will separate the rocket apart. Um, so that's, that's, again, this is our fourth method now. Um, so, but if you put the electronics in the bottom stage right here, you know, because this is all together. If you put the, the electronics in the bottom stage, then you need to prevent drag separation. Because if it drag separates, you know, you got the ignit igniter in this bottom stage, it could just yank it right out. So you don't want that to happen because now your upper stage is just free flying and it's not igniting and not going where you want it to go. So to prevent it from drag separation, and that's what I got right here, is I got little shear pins and these are just little plastic nylon screws and what I would do is I would drill a hole right in here thread those screws in and those screws go through this tube and into the shoulder of the up of the bottom stage right there and that will prevent it from drag separation but now we need to to break those screws when it's time to stage and that force again is going to come from the exhaust gases on the upper stage motor. So they're going to pressurize that area in there and they're going to create so much pressure they're going to split right these little screws, they're going to split them apart. That's why they're called shear pins because we're going to cut them. Uh, and once they're cut this will take off and you know now you got your rockets apart. So those are the four methods of separating a rocket. The first one we never use and that's some kind of apparatus like squibs, electronic squibs, explosive bolts, things like that. We don't use them. The second method is the typical um, Estes model rocket motors where we're using the pressure from the booster motor to separate. The third method is we're going to use the pressure from the upper stage motor to separate. And then the fourth method is drag separation. So those are the four methods of separating a rocket, a two-stage rocket. I hope you found that to be enlightening. 
Um, and despite my, you know, not going to fin off of a rock, <laughs> it happens. Um, so I'll fix this. Um, I think I do have a video on fixing fins that pop off. Um, if you go to the Apogee website at www.apogeerockets.com, go to the education menu and then scroll down to the advanced construction videos. That's where we have all of our tutorials on how to repair rockets and how to do great things like, uh, you know, separating rockets. Uh, my name again is Tim Van Milligan. Uh, this is the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.